The South African Roybos Council is ramping up research to better understand how our indigenous tea fights disease. A hefty 4.5 million rand will be invested in probing Roybos' potential reduction of allergies, heart disease, diabetes, as well as skin cancer. So scores of South Africans suffer from these diseases. And to discuss the matter for uh, more, we've joined in studio by Roybos Council spokesperson, Adele Toit. Adele, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. What inspired this? I mean, 4.5 million rand is not a decision that you make overnight. Clearly, they must have been sparked by some kind of inspiration in terms of the healing properties of rooibos. Absolutely. So we know and love rooibos, but we don't necessarily know how it works and what it does, mm. specifically when it comes to health benefits. So the rooibos Council is really committed to doing research into rooibos and scientifically proven the benefits that we know are there. Well, I mean, talking about those benefits, what are they? I mean, besides the fact that it tastes great with honey in the morning. Absolutely. Right? What else are there, the healing properties? And what made you even discover such a properties? So, rooibos is known to fight diabetes, which is very important because it's becoming one of the most uh, prevalent diseases worldwide. Mm. It also helps to fight heart disease um, in many different ways. And a recent research done has proven that rooibos actually helps to fight stress. Stress? Now, how? Yes. Yeah, so, it so helps there goes my chamomile tea. <laughs> what was I doing? Mix it with time. rooibos and you're fine. <laughs> so it helps to lower the, the stress hormone called cortisol, and that helps you to manage stress, which we in South Africa really need a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we're talking about you know the research in itself, 4.5 million being yeah. put in it, how exactly will the mechanics work of that research? So there's a couple of research projects going on. One of the most important ones, is, and the biggest ones, is one that will be take place at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, mm. and will do human trials where people will drink um, rooibos tea and we'll look at the benefits and the and the heart, dis heart disease protective elements of rooibos. So we know rooibos protects the heart but we want to see more closely what exactly it does to cholesterol, yeah. to blood pressure. So people will be drinking rooibos tea for um, 12 weeks and then we'll do research That's all they have afterwards. to do. They have to literally drink rooibos tea. Yes. This is the best job in the world. Yes, right? absolutely. <laughs> but when it comes to lifestyle illnesses, I think that you're touching on a very um, intricate point because mm. the lifestyle illnesses are usually caused by the by our diets and absolutely. what we consume and the fact 100%. that we do, not, we do not exercise. We, sure. we consume a whole lot of fatty acids nonsense. And, and a lot of nonsense and then we sit in front of the television or we sit behind our laptops absolutely. because we've got deliverables to meet but we're not actually doing anything with our bodies. For and sure. this is a growing phenomena in the country. For so sure. you're saying to me that maybe the healthier um, option will be to drink rooibos after I have a meal so that they can actually, and the properties of the healing properties of yes. rooibos can start working in my favor. Absolutely, and you know, we should be taking about five to seven um, um, servings of fruits and vegetables, and we mm. don't. Us in South Africa, we take about 1.5 um, servings, and that's really bad if you look, if you think about it. Sure. And if you drink a cup of rooibos tea, that can substitute those antioxidants that you're not getting through your fruits and your vegetables. And I mean, I mean, looking at the fact that it's just the fruits, the vegetables around stress, the healing properties of the stress, and also looking at um, you know the the research that comes in yes. with it. Are we going to be able to find it in a pharmaceutical package? In other words, rooibos no longer a tea, but rooibos actually a, a little bit of a supplement, like you would with your, your vitamin D supplements. Yes, of course that is possible, and along the lines, that you, that is something that people can look at. But the council really wants to look at, if you drink a cup of rooibos tea, how, many, how much benefits can you get from mm. that? So not only is there heart disease research, there's other research like sports performance enhancement, there's reaches on skin, so we want to see how rooibos tea can improve autoimmune skin diseases like psoriasis. There's also even at the University of Stellenbosch, they're doing research on skin cancer and how rooibos tea can prevent skin cancer oh, from developing. That's a, that's yes. a very interesting and looking at specifically a gel or a cream that you can apply to fight the inflammation that comes when you get sun, um, sun exposure and prevent skin cancer in that sense. So it's very exciting. I have to ask, what took us so long? to actually embark on such a research. I mean, rooibos has been around for donkeys. It's almost Absolutely. as though the, the, the solutions were staring at us in the face, but we couldn't make the decision of actually going forward and making it something where we research it mm. um, you know, with that much of tenacity. So what make us, made us, us you know, take I, so long? I think it, the research has been done for a long time and there's been things that we're focusing on, but now I think it's more of a strategic direction on what do we want to focus on? Mm. What do we think rooibos can work for? And one of the other things that really is interesting is that we're looking at studies to see how rooibos can improve 
hay fever. So many people suffer from allergies and September hay fever. September is the worst for exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah. And there's at the University of Cape Town, they're looking at the Lung Institute at how rooibos can actually um, take those allergies away because we know rooibos is good for allergies, but UCT is actually looking at how it can help for allergies. And this is going to bring me to my next question. Once we found out that the rooibos has got, I mean, you've mentioned numerous healing properties of rooibos tea, right? Currently, South Africans consume it without even thinking much because yes. it is more affordable and also it's granny's tea brewer. So yes. you, you'll definitely drink rooibos tea just from a family perspective, right? Yes. However, does that not then implicate the cost of rooibos going forward? Because if I know that rooibos can prevent skin cancer mm -hmm. or rooibos can help me with hay fever or rooibos has got healing properties for lifestyle illnesses such as diabetes, mm -hmm. surely this is a, 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 an opportunity to raise the prices of rooibos so that you're able to account for the research that you're currently doing. It is possible, but at the end, when you make an extract or a gel or any other product from rooibos tea, you still need to use the rooibos plant that it harvest, is harvested where it is harvested. So whether you use it in a tea or in an, another application, it's still being used and um, used for the benefits. So it's like su supply and demand depends on how obviously the harvest goes, etc. But I don't think it will really influence the price of rooibos going forward. Okay, well, that's a good thing to actually hear there, Adele, and uh, knowing the fact that people can still continue drinking rooibos without having a thought in mind and uh, still have a benefit you. Um, with the healing properties of rooibos tea. Adele Dutoy, they're giving us the latest in terms of rooibos tea. She's from the South African Rooibos Council, um, giving us uh, more insight into the healing properties of rooibos tea.